After recently talking about a bunch of my favorite comedy movies of all time, I think it's time to dive into another category of movies that I love, and that's horror movies. I mean, I love them so much that I have a horror VHS tattoo tattooed on my leg. So now we're gonna get into some of my favorite, possibly top 10 horror movies. Scary, thriller, kind of hard to kind of find the gap of what's what these days, but horror movies of all time. The first one is gonna be a movie that I watched with Ricky when I was in high school for the first time, and that was a movie called Signs with Joaquin Phoenix, with Mel Gibson, and a few others that do a really great job as well. But this movie, I don't think a lot of people at the time when I saw it, I don't think a lot of people loved the movie, so I was a little hesitant when I went into it. But Ricky and I absolutely for sure loved the movie Signs. I remember exactly where we were when we watched it. We watched it upstairs in his old bedroom, and Ricky has one of those homes where his parents had one of those homes where he was living at the time to where when you walk out across the stairs to get something, there's a giant open window. And then when you go downstairs, there's another big giant open window. And his parents lived on the edge of a cliffside to where it was pitch black outside, no neighbors, no nothing, literally like a scary forest. And I remember watching the movie and being so scared for the bathroom break that I do what my daughter does now to where when I walked away, I was like, uh, Ricky, you can hear me, right? I'm just like down downstairs get, getting something. And he's like, yeah, I can hear you, dude. And he knew that I was scared. And I think he kind of taunted me a little, but funny enough, he did the exact same thing a little later when he went to use the restroom. Signs is awesome. The next one is my favorite cinematically shot horror movie, and that's The Ring. Not Ringu, which is great, but The Ring. I love the way this movie is shot. I love a lot of the symmetry and a lot of the circles that you see all throughout the movie and the horse's eye looking up above the well and a ton of other places. I loved that what was happening in this movie takes place from watching an old VHS tape. I know it sounds silly, but when I watched that movie, I think it kind of re-sparked my love towards all things VHS. Again, I know that sounds a little silly, but it definitely did it for me. And that movie, great actors, great actresses, the mom as well. And I think even the effect of the girl coming out of the well and the girl coming out of the TV were so cool at the time. And even now I've rewatched it. Watching some other channels like the Corridor Crew kind of break down how all this actually took place and how they filmed a lot of these scenes. And it just shows that even big cinema channels that are huge into cinema and cinematography look back at this and say, yeah, this was really cool when it came out because this was pretty groundbreaking and pretty amazing. This shot's actually done backwards to get her hair to flow the right way. So they probably started with her leaning out and then she leans back and pulls her arm back to get her hair to oh, flow. Oh yeah, yeah, correctly. of course. Because the sure. hair like droops over the TV in a really interesting way. Yeah, which they also did on the well. It's a really nice subtle touch that throws you off and makes you think that things are being otherworldly. So aside from being a scary movie, the way it was shot and the way it looked was super beautiful to me, which I wasn't normally looking for anything in that, like that in a horror movie. Can you show you the horses? But you understand, Rachel. Tell me, what is it you think you know? Exorcist is so interesting for me because my grandfather was an actual exorcist. So when I was, I didn't see this movie until later in my life, and I remember telling my mom after the fact that I saw it and her being so upset with me because for our family, her dad, it was a very real thing. And for her, and I grew up a Christian, still I'm a believer, um, it just kind of sits differently because it's not like ghouls and goblins and ghosts and scary to our family. It's like, no, this is more like a real thing. Your grandfather experienced this. This isn't something to joke around with. I even remember years later when the exorcism of Emily Rose came out, my mom was like, please don't watch that. Please don't watch it. Spoiler, I did see it, and I really liked the movie as well. But I've always been into dark stuff, into horror stuff, into creepy stuff, so I couldn't get myself away from watching it. But yeah, there is some scenes in The Exorcist that I wouldn't say are scary to me, but that rub me in a way that do make me feel uncomfortable. There's a few scenes in particular that I don't even like talking about what it is because it makes me feel awkward and uncomfortable. So I won't talk about it, but yeah, just that movie, it wasn't scary to me. It just definitely got into like the gut of my stomach, knowing that this kind of stuff really does happen. There is another world, <gasps> the world of darkness. 
Another big one for me that I've heard a lot of different reception on, and some people love it, some people still to this day hate it, and that's Blair Witch. For me at the time when I saw it, it was pure. I didn't have people on the internet telling me it's dumb or it's stupid or it's too shaky or anything like that. I just went into it with my brothers and my cousin Chris. I remember my brother Nathan driving and us talking on the way and him saying, whether he knew it was fake or not or real or not, we all believed in the car at that moment that this movie was 100% real and it scared the bejesus out of us. It was the first movie we saw that was that type with, you know, the camera just being held and shakiness and no crazy cinematography going on at all. Completely opposite of the movie The Ring. And the movie, at the time during the movie, I wouldn't say I was necessarily scared. It was when the movie was over, I remember getting home. I remember exactly where we parked, me and my cousin Chris couldn't get ourselves to get out of the car because we saw it like at a super late showing. It was probably two in the morning or something. We couldn't get ourselves to get out of the car and walk across the street and go upstairs into the apartment we were at at the time. It was a funny thing because just like the movie Signs, we were both like, cool, like, um, should we go to the house right now? Or should we, like, I don't know, we could like listen to music in here or something, no phones at the time. And man, I remember getting ourselves to be like, okay, let's just go out together. Three, two, and just bolting it upstairs. And almost like you close the front door when you get in, you're like, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. That movie scared the crap out of me. Hurry up, I'm coming. My boots aren't laced. Oh my God, what a Really cool one, wasn't sure if this was a horror, but I'm gonna call it one, and that's The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. I've talked about this before again, so I won't go too deep into detail, but I do love it, so I'm gonna throw it in here. Man, just seeing um, the transformation of the chamber of Jeff Goldblum going in the transformation chamber, being stuck in there with a little fly in there, and Jeff turning into The Fly. I know there is other iterations of that movie, but for me, I love the Jeff Goldblum one. I love seeing the, the prosthetics, is that the word you call it? The animatronics, whatever you wanna call it. I'm, I don't know about that stuff too well, but it's not CGI. That I do know, and I don't like CGI. Pretty much at all. Barely, 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 rarely do I like CGI. But just seeing the way Jeff transformed his face, the way it would melt off and fall off, the transformation of him being on the roof, the scariness, with other people in the movie as well, seeing him transform and change. That movie, to me, again, I don't know if it's technically in the books, a horror movie, maybe it is, but it was absolutely horrific for me as a kid. And again, it not being CGI, totally rewatchable, totally great movie, and you will not laugh when you see what's going on in the movie, you'll be like, that is disgusting looking because you can't beat the effects when stuff is real over CGI. What's happening to me? Am I dying? Is this how it starts? Am I dying? I love the movie It, the original movie It, and I also love the new movie It, but not the part two of the new movies It. For me, as a kid, I was one of those people that was scared of clowns, but only because my sister was, I don't know what phase she was in or what, but she had a bunch of those like masquerade looking clown faces all over her room. I don't know what you would call that, that what she was into that made her do that. But I remember seeing it back in the day, the original, and then in her room, although they weren't clowns, these type of things would scare me going forward. And I wouldn't say I was particularly, like I said, scared of clowns, but in her room, I felt uncomfortable. And I don't think I really made the tie-in later. I'm like, oh, it's probably because this stuff reminds me kind of of Pennywise. And again, the new one was really good as well. The first part was really good. I feel like in the second, they definitely forced some things and just felt a little less pure, a little less natural is maybe the word. But either way, original It, new movie It, part one, great movies. <laughs> Again, unsure if this is a thriller, psychological, horror, whatever, but Silence of the Lambs. Probably one of the most, I'd say, respected of these movies, if you would call it a horror movie, because there is just quote after quote after quote of this movie that people know and people love to this day, and I think Anthony Hopkins is absolutely unbelievable as Hannibal Lecter, but Silence of the Lamb, the original was just such a pure art form of this type of movie where you felt actually, not just like horror, like boo, I'm scared, but like, this is almost like a nightmare situation that can easily happen. I think for me, that movie is the defining, even though I'm a very helpful person in real life when it comes to, you know, old lady across the street or someone needs help with something. But you better bet I think twice when I see someone loading something up in a van and I'm like, they probably could use some help. Do I wanna help them? Yeah, Silence of the Lambs kinda did that to me.
might get crap for this one, but one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Silent Hill. And not just as the fact that I was a huge Silent Hill fan in the video game, but Silent Hill the movie when it came out, it just hit me in all the right places. Still, that, that sound of that when the alarm sounds and you, something about like a timed, almost like in the movie I Am Legend to where when like you know something bad is gonna happen and there's like that impending doom when you know that alarm's gonna go off that every time it goes off, you're almost like, it's like that dreadful feeling in your heart like, oh. Like there almost is no peace, you know, like there is gonna be no peace. Even if there is peace and you're in a happy day, good mood, you know it's short lived because it's that impending doom of knowing that sound's gonna go off and bad things are gonna happen. <laughs> saw, when I first saw that movie, Man, that movie shook me to my core. And I am not like a torture horror guy. That's not my thing. And Saw technically does have a lot of those elements in it. But I remember the first time I saw it, it was not in a movie theater, it was at my house. And I remember being with my dad and my oldest brother watching the movie and being not necessarily scared, but like, oh boy, what's gonna happen next? How is this happening? What's the twist? What's the turn? The movie's just about over. And I know, spoiler alert, at this point, doesn't really matter any of these. At the end of the movie, when the dude got up off the floor that was in there the whole time, it absolutely blew my mind. It kind of shook me in a way to where I was like, oh man, I, they're like doing something with the storytelling of this to where sometimes the monster is with you all along and you didn't even know it and you could have defeated it. So it was just such a twist for me. Jaw dropped when he got up off the floor. My dad and I were just like, no, no way. It was awesome. I absolutely loved the movie Saw and maybe like the first three or four going on from there. Not too much when I got later. Didn't hate it, but the first three or so, but number one was amazing for me. Hello, madam. Dr. Gordon. I want to play a game. The hills have eyes, even to right now and present time. Anytime I'm somewhere where we're driving, recently my wife and I went to Utah. No, not knocking on Utah, but anytime there's like mountains or a lot of rock formations and you're kind of on a long stretch of road and I see mountains and rocks, I literally tell myself, I'm like, I can't go through a Hills Have Eyes situation. That movie is, I'm trying to think of all these horror movies, what would be my worst nightmare? Maybe, maybe Silent Hill, but this might be a close second because in these movies you have family with you. And anytime there's family involved, obviously as a dad, as a husband, your brain thinks differently because you're not just looking out for yourself, you're looking out to protect others. And sometimes in these movies, you can't do either. And that to me is a nightmare situation. But there's some scenes in the movie too that are definitely very uncomfortable, that make me feel very, very uncomfortable. Uh, the kind of stuff that I wouldn't be proud to tell people that I watch. And I know that's weird because that's what horror movies are. They invoke these emotions. That's what they're supposed to do, but there's still some horror movies that I wouldn't say take it too far because that's, that's what horror is, but where I'm just like, oh boy, that's an uncomfortable moment. I wouldn't want uh, my mom, Jesus, to know I was watching. <laughs> he already knows. Dang it. The hills have eyes. The lucky ones died first. Before I go on to kind of wrap up some of my favorite horror movies of all time, there's a whole bunch that would surprise you that I really love, but they're not my absolute favorites. Movies like Evil Dead or The Shining or anything with Jason or Freddy Krueger. Yeah, I love these movies, but they're just not there for me personally as like my favorite of favorites. Again, great movies and I wanted to kind of point them out and there's a bunch more that are huge hits that people love, even Halloween movies. I love Michael Myers, but I'm not necessarily in love with the Halloween movies as a whole. But with that said, I'm gonna get on to my last one and remember let me know your favorites the last one for me is definitely more of a thriller but I'm still gonna kind of place it in here as I said they kind of mesh for me um, is the movie seven that movie to me there was just so many scenes in that movie with all the seven deadly sins again being a religious person it always messes with my brain when there's anything even if it's not technically religious but that has like a spin on religion or even kind of invokes it or talks about it always sits a little different the seven deadly sins and each one of those sins played out in a different way to where when I watched the movie after one two or three of the sins being shown as what they were I remember just being so like my stomach would hurt knowing, okay, what's the next sin? What are they gonna show next? What, what's gonna be the act for that sin? And there was some that were just like, man, that, that, that's, that's gnarly. But again, I'm in, I love horror, I love thriller, I love psychological horror, I love weird, I love dark. But 
the way that it invokes those feelings and makes you feel and kind of hurts to watch is what, in my opinion, makes horror movies so good sometimes because if it can make you feel those things, it's doing its job. And you got Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. So, I mean, you're gonna have two amazing actors regardless, but put into this setting and given this script they were given, my gosh, knocked it out of the park, an absolutely fantastic movie. Not even just fantastic horror or thriller or psychological thriller or drama, whatever you want to call it. Just a great movie in general. No fingerprints and no witnesses of any kind. Nope. All right, when it comes to this genre, let me know what your favorites are because there's so many different types of movies within this. There's the thrillers, there's the psychological thrillers, there's the slow builds, there's the jump scares, there's the slashers, there's the tortures, there's the being alone in the wilderness. There is a ton of different types of these movies, so let me know what some of your guys' favorites are down there. I really would love to hear it because, again, huge horror fan. Oh.